What's up everybody, Big Sky Bowler coming to you again with another Analyzing the Two-Handed Pros video. And today we are going to look at the third two-handed professional, Jesper Svensson. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Unfortunately, my web camera decided to stop working today, so no face cam. That's okay. All we are really concerned about is the breakdown of Jesper's game anyway. Okay, so I have three separate clips here of Jesper, and after analyzing his game, I am seeing some similarities between him, Belmo, and Simonson. As a two-hander, however, he is unique, and that is what we are really looking at today. What makes him unique, you may be asking? Well, Let's start with a behind camera angle. The first thing we will notice about Jesper is how his swing is completely different in comparison to Belmo or Simonson. Jesper uses mostly straight arms in his swing, and I do believe this is because he is so tall and has lengthy arms that he really has no need to bend his elbows to achieve an effective swing. The unfortunate part is that Jesper, when compared to other two-handers we have looked at already, muscles his swing more to get it into the backswing. We will be able to see this more clear in a moment from the side view. One of the side effects of a muscled swing is that it's going to force the swing to the inside part of your head. Now I have the video paused here as his swing reaches the apex. Notice just how far to the inside of his head his ball is. If we were to actually measure this distance, it would be almost an entire ball width to the inside part of his head. Notice here how the ball is almost perfectly in line with his non-ball side shoulder. Unfortunately, because of this, Jesper redirects his swing as the ball enters the downswing, and therefore, we see Jesper's ball have so much side rotation, and this is also why we see him using urethane the majority of the time. If Jesper's ball was to follow its natural swing path without it being redirected at the end, it would end up in the left gutter in this particular example. Urethane is less affected by redirection and maintains its smooth shape even with more axis rotation, whereas reactive balls tend to become rather uncontrollable when you have a very high amount of axis rotation. Because of a reactive ball's reactiveness to the slightest bit of friction on the lane, redirection of the swing will cause inconsistent ball reaction. This is something that I struggled with for a long period of time in my own game when I was swinging the ball incorrectly. It took me a great deal of time and effort to overcome my natural tendency to muscle the swing so badly. Even though we see this negative part of Jesper's game, keep in mind that he has become exceptional at overcoming this by being extremely consistent at what he does. And in the end, consistency is what all bowlers should strive to achieve. For Jesper, the redirection occurs at the point of release. You will see that his follow through continues to the inside part of his head every single shot he throws because he has to redirect the ball to get it online with his intended ball path. Even though he muscles his swing, from what I've seen, Jesper is doing an exceptional job of ensuring that in the downswing his ball side arm remains relaxed. He does not pull the ball down, he instead allows the ball to fall into the downswing. Now let's take a look at the side view and discover why Jesper muscles the ball into the backswing so drastically. Now as you can see here with Jesper's timing, he has no push away, so he actually starts his swing in step number three, which is very similar to Anthony Simonson. Now you have to watch very carefully here in this side view and watch Jesper's knees. So unlike Anthony Simonson, where Anthony basically collapses very low to the approach, and then his knees actually come up in his third step to generate that upward momentum with his body, Jesper does not do this. If you watch his knees, they actually stay in line the entire length of his approach. And this is a direct result why Jesper muscles his swing so drastically. Because he is not generating any upward momentum with his body, he has to get that ball into the swing the only other way possible, and that is by using his non-ball side hand to lift the ball into the swing. Now let's take a closer look at Jesper's release. 
Unfortunately, I could not find a better side view of his release, so we're going to have to just stick with this video even though it's poor quality. One of the biggest struggles I see with most two-handers is when they release the ball, they attempt to keep their wrist cupped at the bottom of the swing. And you'll notice here, as Jesper is releasing his bowling ball, he's allowing that ball to roll off of his hand, and his powered cup position at the bottom does not remain that way. His wrist comes open, the ball rolls off, and this is why Jesper has one of the higher rev rates out of most two-handers on tour. Again, keep in mind, rev rate does not come from keeping that power position at the bottom. It comes from how quickly that wrist goes from a cupped power position to an uncupped position at the bottom of the swing. In combination with just how far underneath the equator of the ball we can get. Okay, so I've backed the video up here to the initial clip of the behind view of his approach, and I wanted to point something out with Jesper's swing. Now, one of the things you'll listen to me talk about a lot in my videos about the proper two-handed swing is just how important your shoulders are in a proper swing. Making sure that your shoulders rotate vertically and not horizontally is one of the biggest keys to the two-handed game that any two-hander really needs to understand. Let's watch Jesper's swing carefully as he enters the downswing. Now I'm going to pause the video here and let's take a look at Jesper's ball side shoulder and just how far underneath his head his ball side shoulder gets. And take a look at his non-ball side shoulder. I know the video is kind of tough to see it. Let's back it up a little bit. But his shoulders are pretty much past a 45 degree angle at this point. If we were to probably measure that, we're probably looking at about 60 degrees, maybe more. Jesper is definitely doing an excellent job of using proper shoulder rotation to generate power and ball speed in his approach. Now let's take a look at Jesper's spine tilt from the side. You will notice that just like Belmo, Jesper starts very upright in his initial setup. As his approach begins, he quickly ends up somewhere around 60 degrees of total spine tilt. The important part here is that once Jesper achieves his spine tilt angle, it stays that way until the ball is gone from his hand. Just like Belmo and Simonson, Jesper's spine tilt changes a total of 60 degrees. All right, everyone, that sums it up for Jesper's game. Hopefully after watching this video, you will realize just how unique each two-hander is. And even though there are key similarities between each two-hander's game, no two of us are exactly the same. Thank you for watching the video today. If you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing to the channel and leave a like and comment below. I will see you guys in the next one.